Hey guys, uh, this is Trenchy, uh, back again to bring you another review. I know these are quite random, but you know how this works, um, I don't really plan to review, sometimes I do, but I don't really plan to review anything if I see something, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do a review for this, that's usually how this works. Sometimes I'll plan ahead of time to review stuff, but main most of the time um, is just kind of uh, spontaneous. And this is kind of spontaneous. I was I was watching a movie uh, tonight, and I really enjoyed the movie, and I uh, want to talk about it. So yeah, now we're here. Um, and I thought about it, I was like, am I... Because I, I was thinking about just being lazy and not doing it, but I'm like, fuck it, I, I do really want to talk about this movie. So my enthusiasm got the better of my laziness, and now we're here. Which, I guess is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you like the reviews or whatnot. But, um, this is a review of a movie from 2015 called Crimson Peak. Uh, I actually know the director of this one. Uh, it was directed by Gilmero del Toro, or you you know, it's hard to say his name, but you know, guy did Hellboy, Pan's Labyrinth, um, the Don't Be Afraid of the Dark remake, which is okay, but the, the original is better in my opinion, uh, he did a bunch of other stuff too, uh, he did Shape of Water, um, but yeah, uh, he did this movie, and, um, this movie's pretty good, it's, uh, essentially, it's a kind of gothic love story, almost in the veins of, like, Edgar Allan Poe, I definitely felt Edgar Allan Poe vibes off of this, especially Fall of Usher House, even though both stories are completely, uh, different, very, very different, I still, they, they, this definitely gave me a vibe of Fall, uh, Fall to Usher House, which is one of Edgar Allan Poe's, I think, most underrated stories. Um, like, everybody's gonna talk about, uh, The Telltale Heart, or, like, The Raven, which isn't even a story, it's a poem. But, um, nobody really talks about Fall from Usher House. Or Fall of Usher House. And it's really good. It's not my favorite. My favorite is uh, The Casket of Amontillado. Um, but uh, Fall from Usher House is a really uh, solid ghost story. And I still don't fucking understand it. And I think that's why I really like it. It's just uh, very confusing. This one's not confusing. This one, you can pretty much figure out what happened and shit. Like, they, they like, explain it to you and shit. But, like, um, I don't know, just the themes, it just has a similar vibe. Uh, so in this, I forgot their names, I'll go look up their names. Oh, okay, yeah, I just wanted to get the main, the, like, the main couple people's names. So we got the main character, Edith. I can't believe I uh, forgot her name. And she's a writer. And she's played by the Alice in, the girl from the Alice in Wonderland remake. Um, and she's playing a similar character here. She's a writer. Nobody really likes her stories because she's a woman writing about ghost stories and stuff and serious subjects in a time when um, that was still frowned upon. Even though that the uh, because of, this is like 1800s, this place plays 18, 1888, I think they said. Um, like, even though they do mention Mary Shelley, uh, she actually brings up Mary, Mary Shelley, so, but, um, yeah, it's still frowned upon for a woman to, like, not write about love stories and stuff, and she's writing about darker material, and the, the, they're, they're like, I don't know if we can publish this, and you should add a romance, and all this bullshit. Sorry, I had to get the cat's water. Um, so, you know, she's kind of a, she's kind of odd, but really smart, really intelligent, 
And, uh, well, she's got fire. She will stick up for her beliefs against people that make fun of her and stuff. And, uh, she meets, uh, I think the dude's name is Thomas. He's from, like, the... He's from England, because she's in America. And, uh, he's from England, and he's trying to get money to, uh, get this machine. He's building machine to, uh... Harvest clay from under his house, under his mansion, and, um, he ends up, uh, marrying Edith against her father's, uh, wishes, because her father, uh, mysteriously is murdered, um, and then goes to live with, uh, Thomas and his sister Lucille, and, and Thomas is played... By none other than Loki, Tom Hiddleston, uh, who does a fantastic job. And Jessica Chastain, who I'm usually not really a fan of. She did a good job as Lucille in this movie as well. And you had Bobby from Supernatural. I think his name's like Jim Beaver. Bobby plays like the uh, Edith's dad. So that was cool. It's like, it's fucking Bobby! Bobby's alive! And then he dies again in this movie. The spoiler alert. He dies. It happens early on, so. Well, it happens in the beginning half of the story. Uh, but, um. Yeah, so. And we found out early on that Edith can see ghosts. Because she sees the ghost of her dead mother, who is warning her. Not to go to a place called Crimson Peak. Uh, and that's like the opening sequence. Uh, that's like the opening scene. And it's cool. I like the ghost in this movie. Because they're all like. The CGI is cool. And even the ghost of her dead mother. It's all like a black skeleton. And it's got this like. Vibe to it of like. Moving liquids and stuff. It's really cool. Like um. I like how there's just, like, floating liquids. You know how, like, blood is in water? It's kind of like that, but, like, in the air and shit. It's really fucking... I love what they do with these ghost effects, especially some of the bloody ghosts and, uh... Uh, the baby ghost, and there's, like, a lot of... Uh, there, they show skeletal ghosts and... More decrepit ghost and like muscular ghost, kind of like Hellraiser, kind of bloody and shit. Like, it's the ghosts are fucking great. They don't appear often because that's not the point of the movie. But, um, they, they appear enough. This is a ghost story. This is definitely a ghost story. And, um,. Yeah, when, when she's at the mansion, we start to learn uh, dark secrets about, uh, you know, Thomas and Lucille and stuff. And it's really interesting. And, um, you know, she also has a lover, a guy that loves her in America. Uh, I forget his name. He's like a, he's like some sort of doctor. Uh, he's played by the dude from Sons of Anarchy, uh, the, the, the main guy. Um, I didn't recognize him at first, though. Was, he did a really good job. Like, I didn't recognize him. I just, I was like, that guy looks familiar, but I didn't know who he was. Uh, Char Charlie Human. Charlie Human. Or Humman. Uh, but, um, yeah, th this movie does a lot of things fucking good. Like, the mansion, the main haunted house of the movie, is fantastic. I like, because it's a dilapidated mansion, there's a giant hole in the ceiling, and there will be, like, like leaves falling down it, or snow, because the ceiling's, like, broken. The ceiling's broken, and then, they're, like, the floor, there's clay sleeping out of the floor, because the, the house is slowly sinking into this giant clay mine that is underneath it, uh, that they're trying to... Uh, kind of dig up to, you know, save the house and profit off the clay. Um, cause I guess the, the clay is like one of the best thing to make bricks out of and stuff. But, um, uh, 
that this while looking dilapidated you like there's like dead bugs everywhere and stuff you could it's still very fancy and very uh gothic like they they have like nice like um curtains and you could tell like even though the walls are starting to rot away they they were still built very beautifully and the the staircase is still extravagant and they have extravagant pictures on the wall. Like, it's still, it's still, like, you know, you could tell these people were, were in our, our wealthy people. Well, we're wealthy people at one point. The, the Then it kind of contrasts with the decay of the house is going to because they don't have that wealth anymore to upkeep the house. And I really like that. It, like, the house looked beautiful and fucking uh torn to torn to shit at the same time and it's it's really uh i really like that i thought that was that was a good little um the good good setting for the uh for the the haunted you know the haunted the the ghost story um like i said i like edith's character i i like thomas's character as well um at least I think his name is Thomas. If his name's not Thomas, I apologize. But he's played by Tom Hiddleston. You'll know. He's, it's Loki. So, uh, he, dude, he, he's so good at the acting. Like, you can, he could just give you a look and you can tell what he's thinking and shit. Like, he, he doesn't even need to talk. He's, he's very good at just, um, you know, kind of quiet acting with his face and shit. And, like, um, I really like his performance, and, you know, you could tell he's got secrets, but he, he seems like a good guy at heart, and he's very conflicted about things, and, um, but there's also a lot of darkness there, too, and he's kind of, at points, comes off like a con artist, like he's, like, He's sneaky at some points because you can tell the certain things he does. You can't tell if he's being honest or if he's not being honest. And it's interesting. And then you have fucking Lucille with, with, the, with the, his sister who is holy shit. Lucille is fucking awesome. Because Lucille is quite cold, quite detached. But, like, she usually doesn't show much emotion. Very, uh, barely any emotion. Um, but there'll be moments where she, she goes and she'll release a fit of emotion. And then she'll, she'll calm herself back down and just switch to emotionless at a dime. And you can tell there's a lot of darkness there. And even when she's being kind, even when she's being quiet, there's still like some malice and threateningness behind her stuff. Even if she's like, you will get well soon. Like, like anything she says, even the nice things, even when she's talking to people she likes, there seems like there's always... At least I, I thought so. It seemed to me like there was always some sort of fret behind it. Even when she's talking to her brother, you know, and shit that she seems to care about. There's always, like, this darkness there. This kind of fret, this kind of malice and coldness. Um, which I, I, I really like that performance and that character and, um... The development of the character, and we find out more about her and more about her brother and shit. And I really like, I really like all the the like main main characters. I like the father. I like how the father was, you know, like he was trying to be a good dad, but he had to do like uh, fucked up things for the betterment of his daughter. And in his mind, at least, and can't blame him. He was kind of right. 
even like he I I I don't agree with some of his methods, but I do feel like yeah, they were justified to a certain degree cuz uh he was he was right. Um Edith's father um there's also the like I said the the doctor who likes her, he's pretty good. Uh, he's just kind of there, you know, to be like the guy that figures it out and tries to come and help and stuff. But um, I still really liked his character. He was very enjoyable. Um, but the the house itself, like I said, that that mansion they're in and the one they go to in England. The one on the, the clay mine. It's fucking... That's a character in and of itself. And uh, that shit is... Like I, I like I said, I really love the layers of this house. And the fucking dog. <laughs> and the dog that's there. Who has a dark secret as well. The dog has a dark secret. Well, it's not really his secret. But he has a dark, tragic past. Kind of... <laughs> The poor dog. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I, like I said, I love the ghost. I love I love how the... I love the, the clay and shit, too. Just, like, how they have vats of clay in the basement. And stuff. And how this, this house is slowly sinking into this clay. I wish there was more... Um... Like, uh... More, you know, plot put into that. More importance... Like, they're trying to save this house that is, like, you know, it's fucking done. There's stuff growing on the walls. There's, like I said, there's a giant hole in the roof. It snows. They can barely keep the place heated and shit. Like, they have to have fires going, like, constantly because it's fucking freezing in there. Because there's a giant fucking hole in the roof. Which it snows through because it's, like, about to be winter time when they're there and shit. And, like, my god, like, like, the fucking, like, they said the floors are sinking. You can see clay sleeping, seeping out of the floor. Like, like, if they step down on it too hard, it will seep above the wooden shit. Like, this house that they're desperately, uh, trying to save, um, by, uh, putting the money into this machine to harvest the clay and, and sell it for more money to repair the house, um, which they're getting the money from, you know, Edith's, uh, you know, family estate and shit, um, uh, like, they, it's there, but I wish there was more, I wish to put a little bit more prominence on it, because it's like, it's an interesting kind of thing. Like, I wish they would have showed more of, like, like, maybe, like, the floors rotting out and stuff and show the, show more the dangers of this house rotting, you know? They don't really focus on the house really rotting. Like, it's there, it's always there, like, the holes in the roof and shit. But they don't really show, like, the clay. They show the clay seeping in once or twice or seeping out of the walls, but I wish... They did more, like, maybe, like, one of the floorboards right out where they're stepping, and there's, like, you could see all, see, like, the whole, like, one person accidentally almost falls through and shit like that. I wish they really focused on that, because that's, like, one of the prominent, like, it, it just seemed like it should have had more importance than it did. I think it had a decent amount of importance. But I would have liked more focus on it. Maybe that's a nitpick. That's probably a nitpick. But, you know. Uh, that's just what I think about it. Um, I really like just a lot of stuff about this movie. The, the way it looks. It looks beautiful. Del Toro does really good with visuals. Uh, there's a really nice hat in the movie. It's really nice. Uh... He, like, I really like the hat, and it had, like, a, like, a, it was a blue or purple band about it. You know, that, I would rub, I would rub that hat. It's a really nice hat. I would, I would definitely rub that hat. Like, that is 10 out of 10 rubbing material. Uh, as far as hats go. 
And, um, yeah, I really, I really like that hat. Um, I was trying to think of what else. Like, everything was solid. Like, like the movie. They, we don't really go to the haunted house immediately. But once we get there, it's really good. And it's like, we don't need to get to the haunted house immediately either. Because I like... I do like the characters. I think the characters were interesting and were able to, you know, carry the movie till we got to the haunted house because this movie isn't like a horror movie. It is. It's a ghost story, but it isn't a full-on horror movie. It's more like a gothic kind of love story, ghost story. That's kind of what this movie is. It's a... It's a, it, there's still horror there, but it's very much, um, uh, like, uh, it's a ghost story, but it's not, like, the ghosts are not, like, the main Fred and stuff, you know? There's more, uh, I won't say nuance, because I'm not even sure if that's the right word, but it's more, there's more to it than that. Um, but the, it's definitely, it... <laughs> I can't say it's not horror. It's definitely still horror. Because there's a lot of, you know, fucked up shit happening. And a lot of, like, I, I will say, some people say it's not scary. There are scary moments. It didn't really scare me. But I think this movie could scare some people. I think it could. Maybe not, like, horror fans who are used to it. But, like, um, I think it could scare some casuals, you know. I think it could definitely, maybe it could scare some horror fans, you know, you never know. So I don't, I don't agree with the people saying it's not scary, but, uh, it, it seems just more than scary. Like, and I know earlier, I think I said it wasn't horror, it is horror. I don't know, my thoughts are going so fast right now. You know how these reviews work. I just, I just spew out my thoughts when I think them. And then I'll change my thoughts mid-thinking them. Um, but, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, it's hard to really go into the story without spoiling it. But, I might do a, a spoiler, uh, a section. Yeah, I think, um... I think I'll do a spot. Before I get into that, I will give this movie... I think this movie deserves, like, a fucking 8, man. 8 out of 10. Like, this movie is really fucking good. Like, it's really fucking good. I, it might become one of my favorites after a few more rewatches and stuff. It probably takes some time to grow on me, but, um... I, I really enjoyed, uh, this movie. I really did. I had a good time with it. It's a good little story. On to the spoiler section. Okay, so if you haven't seen the movie, stop here unless you don't care. If you don't care, keep watching. If you do care and want to watch the movie, um, stop. For your own sake. But, um... So it turns out Thomas had three fucking wives. <laughs> Thomas Thomas had three fucking wives uh, before her, and he's uh, they're poisoning them with the tea. They're poisoning them with the tea and taking their money, but the money's never enough to get the machine going to save the mansion, so they always gotta find another wife. And another person to procure money from. And, uh, they killed them because, uh, Thomas and his sister, I keep forgetting her name, are, uh, Lucille, his sister to Lucille, are lovers. Because they were raised in an attic together. And they didn't really know love besides their, uh, besides each other. And they also killed their mother. Uh, they also ended up killing their mom as children. 
And Lucille, of course, is the more, more violent one, too, and she's the more deranged and may or may not have spent time in a mental hospital. And, uh, well, you can see that Thomas actually had fall, fallen in love with Edith, so when it comes time to murder her, he's more hesitant about it. He doesn't want to murder her. Well, she's like, you know, this is routine for her at this point. Let's murder the bitch so we can... You know, do our weird incest shit. Because even, even like, Edith's like, I knew you're not your sister, his sister. And she's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> because the ghost shows uh, Edith them having sex. Which, why do all the good stories have to have incest in them? God damn it. God damn it. Why? Why is this a thing? There's a lot of great stories. It's like... I guess it makes sense for this story and it works, but at the same time, it's like, God damn it. I've been talking about incest so much in the last couple of weeks, not by choice. It just keeps getting brought up. It, it, it just keeps coming back, and I can't seem to escape incest. It's really... Uh, it really sucks. I wish I could, like escape incest but apparently I can't um yeah yeah it keeps coming back for more um but um that's gonna sound weird but um most of the people know that's seen this they've seen the channels and they seen this channel before they they didn't know what happens they yeah you know you know it's not weird it's only weird if you make it weird. But, um, yeah, like, and so the ghosts are seeing are of the dead wives and the dead baby. And you find out the baby's an incest baby. Like, it wasn't even the one chick's baby, the ghost baby. They thought it was the one wife's baby, but it's an incest baby. And it, it's some crazy shit. It's some crazy shit. And we found out Lucille is the one that murdered the father. I thought it was Thomas at first that murdered her dad. But it was Lucille because her dad got slammed into the sink while he was shaving and shit. And uh, it was Lucille who, who murdered her dad because Lucille is the more vindictive one. And uh, you, she plays some good cat and mouse games throughout the story. Um, I really like the cat and mouse game between Edith and Lucille. Um, I thought that was dope. Um, but, um, there's a great showdown, uh, out in the, but, well, what happened was, is the doctor shows up to save Edith. Uh, they end up stabbing him. Lucille does, and then, uh, Thomas finished the job. But then, we find out Thomas doesn't want to kill him, and he's like, we're gonna end this. We're all gonna, like, run away together and stuff. He doesn't want... He wants to stop the, the... The cycle of murder and shit. You know, he just wants... He just wants it all to end. So he asks the doctor where to stab him. And the doctor tells him... and it, He stabs him in a place where it won't kill him. And he takes him down to the basement. Till he can save Edith. And, uh... Edith ends up, before signing the, the will or whatever, because she needs to finish signing over the money to uh, them uh, before she dies, you know, so they can get the money and shit. Uh, she stabs them with the pen that she got as a gift from her father. Stabs uh, Lucille in the neck. But Lucille is, of course, still alive. Uh, fucking Thomas shows up. He's like, dude... We need to stop this. And Lucille's like, no. And Lucille gets mad because Thomas has fallen in love with Edith. And she's jealous. Because only she can... Only she wants to have sex with Thomas. Um, and then... Only she wants to be Thomas's lover. So then she ends up stabbing Thomas in the face. And he dies... And then she starts chasing Edith around and they go out in the snow and she has this big ass knife and she's about to like fuck Edith up. It's really cool. And Edith's got a shovel 
and Edith's like it was an awesome fight. I really loved the setting of the of the snowstorm and shit. And like, but and the house, how it's snowing in the house as well. And they go down to the basement with all the vats of clay, and they're chasing each other around down there. Like the whole, the whole like setting for the final fight's fucking great. And then they go at it, but guess what? Thomas comes back as a ghost and distracts Lucille enough for Edith to hit her with the shovel, and then. And then she's like, you're either going to have to kill me or I'm going to kill you. And, of course, Edith ends up killing her. And she ends up escaping with the dude, uh, the, the doctor dude, who also likes to take pictures of ghosts. Because, you know, Edith's in the ghost because she can see them. And uh, this guy just happens to be in the ghosts um, as well. And... Uh, yeah, they end up leaving, and then we see at the end that Lucille's a ghost, and she's playing the piano, because she's really good playing the piano, and they're kind of stuck there in that dilapidated mansion for eternity. Yeah, I just, like, I even felt bad for Lucille at one point, and I know I shouldn't, because she's a horrible, vile person. But even though her and Thomas are horrible and viable, they're still human. And there's a lot of real, raw human emotions that led to what they did. And I do not agree with what they did, but it's just sad. And the sad thing is, is like, when the baby died, they wanted to... They were really sad about the baby because they wanted to have the baby. And even the wife was like... Even the wife that Thomas had, she was okay with keeping the baby. She was going to help the baby, you know? Like, she wasn't... She was fine that Thomas fucked her sis his sister. Um, Still weird to say. But, um... He was fine with it. And then the baby ended up dying anyways because, you know, it was deformed incest baby. And, uh... It's just sad. This movie... There's a lot of sad shit to it, because in the end of the day, yes, they're fucked up, but even the bad guys were still very, very human. And, uh, it's just sad. But good ass movie. I would suggest checking it out. Um, I know most people probably left at this point, but, uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, if you're still here, for the spoiler section, uh, thank you for watching this review. I don't know when there will be another one, um, but I should. I, I've uh, there there might be a series coming around the horizon, um, where I and a a friend, so to speak. I don't know if I say it right. Friend, friend, uh, will review some movies. But that may or may not happen. But yeah. Um, uh, I hope you guys have a good day. Stay frosty. This is Trenchy. Signing off. Beep up boop.